Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse from the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Asara Sheyoshvim. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on the 13th day of the month of Tammuz in the year Tavshin Membez, 42 years ago. The Rebbe went on to certify and edit this Chassidic discourse in honor of the celebration uh, for the previous Rebbe, which is Yud Beis, Yud Gimel Tamas, in the year Tafshe Nun, 34 years ago. So again, the Chassidic Discourse is based on a Mishnah in Pirkei Avot that says, Asara Sheyoshvim Ve'oishkim Torah. Ten people that are sitting and learning Torah, Shechina Shruya Beinayim, the Divine Presence is amongst them. And the Mishnah goes on to say, Afilu Chamisha, how do you know even five, or even three, or even two, or even one, that the Shekhinah comes, so the Mishnah gives uh, verses to prove that whatever level, and many people are sitting and learning Torah, the Shekhinah is always there. So the previous Rebbe explains, and again, the one that was celebrating his uh, celebration of redemption, in a Chassidic discourse that he gave out to the celebration of Yud Beis Tammuz, the first celebration, which was a year later in Tafresh Peiches, and he says over there as follows, even though what we learn in the Mishnah, that one person is learning Torah, and how much more so two and three and five, you're bringing down godliness, the Shechina is resting, but nevertheless, when it comes to learning Torah, Rabbim, of multiple people, which is a, a ten people, so that's drawing down a much greater um, revelation of godliness. And he says as follows, just like when it comes to prayer, Chazal tell us that the prayer of Rabbim, of multiple people, does, the Hashem does not look away from it. Like it brings a verse, Hain Kale Kaber Valayimas, that when a, multiple people, a minion, ten people uh, pray, well, what happens is they draw down the 13 attributes of compassion. Yid Gimel Midas Harachim. So the same thing also applies to Torah. That when there's Torah that's learned, but Rabbin with multiple people, what happens is you bring down a very, very powerful uh, godly light. Now, to explain the idea that it says, Tfilas Rabbim, prayer of multiple people, and in the Chassidic Discourse, <coughs> he uses the expression of Rabbim, multiple people, also with reference to learning Torah, even though we said it, the Mishnah said it's holding 10 people, and the fact is Rabbim, <coughs> many, <coughs> can mean more than, more than 10, and also, um, the fact is that 10 is not the completion of many because there's much more. Rabbin can be much, much more. So why is he used the expression of Rabbin? So, he, so in order to understand that, he says we're going we're gonna to have to explain with an introduction that the reason why something that's done in front of 10 Jewish people is considered a, 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 a huge publicity and we don't find a difference of something done in a public, open way, there's no difference between 10 and more than 10. Once it's 10, it's publicity. If you don't say with 20, there's more publicity. It's 10, publicity, and afterwards it doesn't make a difference. Why? What's the, what's the magical number of 10? Because the idea of 10 <coughs> is an example, and it includes within it all the different 10 different types of Jewish people. The heads, the wood choppers, the water carriers, etc. And when something's done in public, in front of 10 um, Jewish people, it's just like you're advertising in front of all the Jewish people. Now, why is 10 called a rabbim? <coughs> many, many people. Um, I know it's, uh, uh, and, and, and it's considered a, a multiple people, which is, you can't get greater. Rabbim is 10, because when a person does something in 10 people, and since 10 is included, all the different types of Jewish people, so that's why it's considered what a rabbim. So that explains the idea of what rabbim has to do with the idea of 10. Rebbe goes on to explain something like this. Explained, the author explains in Tanya that the quality of 10 people applies in all areas of Torah and mitzvot. Because as we know, there's no such thing as a, 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 a Dovah Shabbat Kedusha, something holy, with a, without a minimum of 10 people. 10 is the power that creates Kedusha, whether it's for prayer, whether it's for Torah study, whether it's for doing mitzvot. But nevertheless, even though it applies to all <coughs> areas, in other words, um, a Torah study, and mitzvot, but the main qualities by prayer, because the source of the verse is in reference to prayer. In other words, that the quality of praying in, in a rabbin, which again, we said is 10 people, what does that mean? When you pray by yourself, it's one thing. When you pray with a rabbin, with 10 people, the expression is, Hashem accepts it, and it's always, it's always a beautiful thing for Hashem. 
<coughs> that's the power of a minion. When ten people get together, Hashem accepts it. And since what's the ultimate goal of prayer? The Hashem will fulfill our request. So therefore, the, the, the quality of, of praying with a rabbin, with, with ten people, over an individual prayer, um, and not that it, it, add, it adds a certain component, but it's actually a whole different prayer. It's a whole different level of prayer. So based on this, you can say, this with the and the discourse, that the quality of Torah and in public um, is just like the quality of prayer in public. What he's trying to say is that it's referring to that it's not just another component, but it's, it's in a main. It's a, it creates a major difference in praying in public. So in other words, just like when, just like praying in public, it's a whole different level. The same thing also studying Torah in public. Ten people is also a whole different level. Shabbat goes on to say he says you can you possibly you can explain this. As we know that it says that Torah is only acquired with a chabura. When you're sitting people together, you're discussing it, you're having a conversation, etc. So what do you see? That when there's a bigger chabura, when there's a bigger group of people, obviously it's much greater. You, know, so you, you acquire it much stronger. Now, since the ultimate, the completion of a chabura of a group is 10 people, because as we learned before, 10 people represents all different types of Jewish people. So therefore, when a person is learning with 10 people, so then the acquiring of the Torah is much, much, much more complete. But there was one segment, seemingly there's not, there's not enough uh, um, an explanation why. Because this qu- uh, um, quality of Torah in, in a group is referring to the person learning Torah requires more. And so you sit down by yourself, okay, you got one level, sit down with a few people, it's deeper. And when you sit down with a group of 10 people, it's much, it's much more powerful. And other when you sit with 10 people, you're acquiring that you're, you're, uh, the Torah is much, much, much more complete. But the fact is, when we compare Torah of, of, uh, in, 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 in a group of Rabbim, which means 10 people, and we're comparing it to prayer of Rabbim, we're not talking about acquiring, we're talking about drawing down a lot. Like it says in the Chesedic Discourse, that when multiple people pray, Mamshichim, we draw down the 13 attributes of compassion. So the same thing also applies when a person learns Torah in public. It's not just you acquire more, but you're actually drawing down a powerful light into this world. In other words, just to recap. So what I was saying is since we're learning the 10 people learning Torah from 10 people of prayer, just like by 10 people of prayer, it's a whole different level that you're drawing down. So the same thing also, Torah, besides the fact that you're acquiring deeper concepts of Torah, but you're actually drawing down powerful light when you learn what were 10 people. So in order to explain this idea, the quality of drawing down of, of the light when, a per, when you're learning Torah in public, so he, he, he starts explaining it, with an introduction of a powerful teaching of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel says, we say it every day in, in the beginning of the prayer services, Vishlaish Esrei Midas, with this 13 different attributes that we, we, we learn out the Torah. Kal um, something from a harder place to an easier place, etc. Shava, two different verses, etc. And he explains over there, that those, the, the previous Rebbe explains that through every one of these Midot, of Kal V'choymer, etc., etc., the 13 attributes that the, we learn Torah, what happens is by every time you learn Torah and you go in depth and you use one of these tools to learn Torah, what happens is new things get revealed. In other words, and what's the reason? Because the fact is that the 13 attributes that you use to learn Torah correspond, are connected to the 13 attributes of compassion. And like the, the Magad of Mizrich taught us that when you look in the Torah and Moshe Rebbe said to Hashem, Kael, Hashem, no refon Allah, heal her, right? So, you know, so the, the Shem Kael, that's the first uh, one of the 13 attributes of compassion. Hashem Hashem Kel Racham, right? This is the first attributes. So what did Hashem respond to Moshe Reinu? He responded to Kabbal Chaimer, and he says that if, uh, if her father spit in her face, she wouldn't be upset. How much more so than the Shechina, which is basically the first attribute of the of the 13 attributes of the Kabbal Chaimer. So you see there's a connection between the learning Torah of the Kabbal Chaimer and the, the, and, the, and the 13 attributes of compassion. And he continues on to explain the the discourse that this is the connection between the two insights in the verse where it says in in, in, in Song of Songs where where, where King Solomon says, Haroya B'Sheshanim, which is pasturing in 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 the roses. So he says, don't read Sheshanim, literally, but it also means Sheshanim, that they learn halacha, 
And so what the first insight is a Shoshanim is learning halacha. And then also Shoshana, that the rose has 13 petals, uh, 13 leaves. And the same thing also, what, what, what's the connection with when you're learning halacha 13 petals, learning halacha 13 attributes, that we have the 13 attributes of compassion. And the idea is when a person learns halacha, what happens is you draw down the 13 petals from the rose. 13 minutes of Rachman. And what happens is when a person learns Torah Barabim in public, so now, just like normally you draw, you draw down the 13 attributes of compassion, you actually draw down from a higher place. Because this that we, that, that, that we say that when a person learns Torah, you draw down the 13 attributes of compassion, is mainly what when you learn Torah Barabim in public. So Rabbi says we have to understand. What did he say in the beginning? That when a person when a person learns the thir- with, with the thirteen attributes that the Torah has learned, you know Kavachaymer, Exayashara, etc. So what do we say from there? That when you learn that, you bring down uh, new ideas. So seemingly, one second, the connection of the thirteen attributes that the, you learn in Torah is con- it, it, that you you bring down um, uh, you bring down a, a new light. What, how does that work? So we learned it happens because these three, the 13 attributes are connected to the 13 attributes of compassion. And, and how do you draw down the 13 attributes of compassion? It comes through, through, through learning terror in public. So what, what's, what, what's the, what's, what, so why is he saying that by learning the, the 13, by learning through the 13 attributes of Kabbalah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, do you bring down new things? It's, it's not about the, thir- the, the ultimate source of the new ideas comes from the 13 attributes of compassion. But nevertheless, he says over there that it comes through what? Specifically through the 13 different ways of learning. So everybody says you can say that possibly the explanation is as follows. That the difference between learning Torah and prayer, because what happens when you pray? When you're praying, you're basically beseeching Hashem and you're praying that, that an energy should come down from below. <clears throat> so, so and, 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 and then when Hashem fulfills your request, so it happens through prayer. So pray, you're beseeching Hashem, and then, you, then an energy comes down, down, down here. However, when it comes to learning Torah, when you're learning Torah, you're not creating your request in Torah. You're learning the Torah of Hashem. It means even before you learned that the Torah was there, before you opened up the Chumash and the Mishnah and Talmud, the Torah was there. So what happens when you're learning Torah? But you're, you're basically op- creating that the channel should come to you, but you're not, you're not bringing down the light. The light is there. You're just bringing it that it should come to you. That's the major, major difference between prayer, pra- prayer and Torah study. By right? prayer, you're basically uh, creating a new light to come in. And by Torah study, you're just creating it to come to you, but the light already existed. So therefore, based on this, you can say that the quality of Torah in, in public versus in private, it's only about the person learning Torah. But basically, you're opening up a bigger channel to yourself. You know, even though he says in the beginning of the discourse that the quality of learning Torah in public is not only by the person receiving it, that the person requires it more, but it also comes, it creates a new energy from high. But there's when a person learns in, in, in public, which we said is raised 10 people, so you're drawing down a, a great, greater light, but you could say that the whole idea of learning Torah, that when a person learns Torah, so you draw down the light that existed before, and what happens is when you're learning Torah, you're drawing down a greater light than existed before. So that's why he brings, you know, since, again, since again, the difference between Torah and Tefillah by, by prayer is you're drawing down something new. By prayer, it already exists. So that's, so different, you're not, you're not creating anything new, it's all about learning. That's why he brings that when a person learns the, the, the Torah through the 13 attributes, what happens is you actually are bringing down something new. You're not just opening something that existed, but you're actually creating something new. In other words, just like by prayer, what happens when you pray, you're bringing down a whole new energy that didn't exist before. Because what do you say in prayer? Yehi Ratzon. It should be the will of Hashem that, and it should come down something, a new blessing. So the same thing also when you learn Torah. And you learn Torah based on the 13 different rules of Kalach Haim So then you're actually bringing down new lights that didn't ex- that exist before. Now why is that? How could you bring in new lights if Torah already is there? Because the 13 attributes that the Torah has learned, that you learned what, is connected to the 13 attributes of compassion, which that's higher than Torah, and that's how you bring down new light into this world. As we know, Torah itself is the Chachma of Hashem, which basically, Chachma is the first of the level of Yishtalshus, the first of the Svirot. On the other hand, the 13 attributes of compassion is higher than Yishtalshus. So when you learn Torah, 
and you learn the 13 attributes of the 13 uh, uh, ways to learn so you're actually bringing in not just from the level of Torah which already exists but you're bringing in from the 13 attributes of compassion which is higher <coughs> And through that, you actually bring new ideas of Torah into this world. And when you learn Torah in public, so not only do you have the 13 attributes of, of, of the way you learn, that brings down the 13 attributes of compassion with Shire, but when you're learning down Torah in public, you actually bring from a higher place. Why? Because drawing down the 13 attributes of compassion through learning is mainly, where does that happen? When you learn in public. In other words, the level of the 13 attributes of compassion that comes through the learning Torah in public is obviously a much powerful um, bringing down light into this world. And he continues on the Hasidic discourse to explain another quality in the prayer in public. That what happens when you draw down the light through prayer in public, it comes, and uh, I'll say it in Hebrew because it's an important idea, it's not based on what you're putting in. So don't you pray, and guess what? You bring in a new light. That's what we learned till now. And when you study Torah in public, so, so you actually bring in something new. Now you're saying something deeper. When a person study, prays, and you pray in public, not only do you bring in a new life, but you bring in much greater than you even, than you even try to achieve on your own. Because when, you, when you're praying, okay, I'm praying, Hashem, give me this. Okay, he gives it to you, voila. Here he's saying, no, no, you're even getting from a much higher place. In other words, what he explains. Besides the fact, that when a person prays on his own, so in Kabbalistic terms it's called a serus latat, it's an awakening from below, of a communal prayer, it reaches very, very high, then you then a very high place, but when you pray in public, it comes from even higher than a place that you can reach, and even higher than a place that a community can reach. And like it says, the Chazal tell us that when a person, when people pray in public <coughs> throughout the whole year, it's just like a prayer that's prayed on, 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 on individually in the 10 days of tshuva. Why is that? It was just like when, when, when a person prays in the 10 days of tshuva alone, so it, basically it's based on the, the prayer that you put in. And that's why it's called Esrat Son. It's a time when, when your prayers are accepted. So the same thing also, when a person prays in public um, with a minyan throughout the year, that comes much greater, not even at the level that you actually put in. And the, so that's in terms of prayer. And, and he continues on to say the same thing applies when you learn Torah in public. That when you draw down, you draw down through learning Torah in public, is, is much greater than the effort you're putting in. So what he's adding over here is, besides the fact that you're creating something new, but you're even creating something new much more than a place that you can affect. So it's almost like a, a Shem is giving you a big bonus. So anybody asks, he says, we have to understand. Even according to the uh, exp explanation, the beginning of the Hasidic discourse, that, and I'll say the word in Hebrew, means when a person puts in their effort of community, you reach, obviously, a great high light. So he explains that the, the part that gets drawn down through the awakening from below of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the community is basically what? The 13 attributes of, com of compassion. And we know the 13 attributes of compassion is above. It's above Ishtalshalas. And when it comes down from a high level style, so it's obviously much deeper than when you requested for. But nevertheless, he says, no, no, no. That when you, when, when the, it's, now he's adding that, that when he, when you, when, with the drawing down through, the, through Rab, which multiple people, it's much greater. So the question he's asking, one second. The fact is, when you pray, if you're drawing down, you get this rachim. It's above a shalos. So what is he adding that's more than you, you than you than you could reach? For sure, it's more than you could reach. But he's obviously adding something deeper. So he says that the point and the explanation is what he's trying to add is as follows: that when, when when a person puts in the effort, what comes down is it's much greater than the effort you put in. That means when the, when you're drawing down through a community effort, it's besides the fact we're saying it's more than you put in. Because that's any time you, you pray, you, you pray, you're getting more than you put. What you put, you put in a prayer, and you're getting more. But the point is, it's even from on high, it's coming down much more. Almost like it's, in Hebrew, it's called in Kabbalistic terms, it's called the Shushla Hashem gives you a gift on its own, and you cannot reach that level. Hashem is giving you something total, totally deeper. And to, to explain, what does that mean? So he gives an example. It's like the idea that we say Yogati Umatsasi. When a person says, "I put in the effort," ah, and I was successful, I found something. 
And it was just like you're sitting, you're trying to study, comprehend something. Ah, you know, I worked, I thought, and guess what I found? If you thought, why don't you find it? Then you put the effort in. So what does it mean you found it? If you said, you got the, I put the effort in, what do you mean you found it? You, you put the effort in and you achieve what you put based on the effort. But the answer is that the knowledge that comes by through your gati, through your effort, is, is it's a gift. It's much deeper than you put the effort into it. And when you get a gift more than you put the effort in, there's two, there's, there's two, there's two levels. And now he explains. When you have a success, your gati, when understanding something that you work really, really hard to try to comprehend, so it's like it's like it's like a community prayer that you got something above the level of ishtal just means something higher than you were able to achieve but you obviously reached it by putting in the effort so the first levels you yeah you put the effort in you got something higher than you can you can obviously achieve but your effort caused that result that's one level a deeper level is that the success by understanding Torah, which comes through our effort, is from a place you didn't even put the effort in. And as you put your effort um, <clears throat> in one area, and all of a sudden you got something from a totally different area. In other words, like the second level of, of community prayer, that what comes down through the work of prayer is just like a gift Hashem gives you. Not because of the effort you put in, and you can't even reach there. But you still have to do your part. And yeah, it comes through the community prayer. Um, just like when a, <coughs> a person puts the effort in Torah learning, you, you get you get a, spe a special gift. So again, before before we go forward, so what's Rebbe saying? There's two, le there's, two le there's two levels. There's one is when a person prays in, in public, yes, you put in the effort, you got a new thing. And the deeper is that you not only got a new thing, you got something you didn't even you weren't even going for. It was a total total side side benefit. And the same thing also applies, like the example he gave is when you got the matzasa, you put effort in, you got a gift. Okay, well, that was that you were hoping for the gift and you got more than you thought. Here he's saying you got something you didn't even expect to get. And there was this I, this difference is also in its source. What do mean the source? Because what we learned, what's the source of all the blessings? All the blessings come from the Yud Gimel Mitzvah the thirteen ashes of compassion. And how is that? Because we know that the the number um, uh, thirteen Yud Gimel. Which is called the Yud Gimel Tikkuni Dikna, 13 strands of light. What's 13? So 13 is really made up of 12 and 1. What's like, why, why 12 and 1? Because on a spiritual level, 12 is referring to Yud Beis Bakr, a level in Kabbalah, which is in the world of Bria. Thir 12 in the world of Bria. What is the 1? The 1, which is on top of the 12, is referring to Malchus Vatsilas. So again, so the first level is 12 is a Bria. And one is from the world of Malchus of Atzilus. Higher than that, Yud 12 is actually 12 um, different uh, 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 lines, which from the world of Atzilus. And one is even above it, above Atzilus. Again, so we have 12 from Abriya, one from At uh, At Malchus of Atzilus, the other one is 12 from Atzilus, and one is even higher than that. So therefore, you can explain that this that we're saying, that you have 13, which is above the level of Ashtalshalus, because when you have the one when, when on, on top of the 12 which creates 13 so what happens then is even the 12 is above Ishtal Shalos because it's coming from the world of Atzillus so he says the same you can say that these two ideas apply as well what does that mean? that the one that comes into the 12 so in the first one we said the 12 is we're in the level of Bria so even after the one comes in, it's still it's 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 still finite 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 number of twelve. But you bring in the one from above Ishtalshos in into them. That's one level. So twelve remains twelve, one comes in them, infuse them with a higher energy. But another way is that they're actually the twelve get ele elevated and they actually get get elevated into the one and they leave their finite level and they become the twelve become infinite. And the, you can say that that's when we say that Echad, which is one, so on one hand it's one, but Echad numerically has a numerical value. Aleph is one, Ches is eight, and Dal is four, so it's a total of 13. So you have the two different levels. One is basically where the one comes into the 12, the 12 remains 12, and it's infused with a higher energy, but then you have the 12 gets into one, where it becomes one, and in the one you still have, obviously you look dig deep into the numerical value, you'll have 13. So you can say that these two ideas, of drawing down 
through our avoida, yes, whether it's whether it's whether it's through prayer or studying Torah in public, that when you draw down in a level um, which is above Hishtal Shalos, we said, and and when when you do your avoida, you reach a, a, a place that you cannot reach there on your own. So it also applies on the two levels. In other words, in the level of 13, that one is where, where the one comes into the 12, because 12 is finite. So you you bring in, um, uh, it comes through the finite 12, and but, but but through that the one comes into the twelve, which is which is which is um, not based on on, on what you can re, uh, re, achieve, like a gato and the the second level where the twelve goes into the one, and they all become part of the infinite, and that's like the level where it's something which um, it, which is totally a gift from Hashem, a srusul a on its own. So Rebbe says he'd like to connect this with the the celebration of Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamas. You see, we're going 12 on one. Remember, 12 on one is part of the 13. So the 12th of Tamas and the 13th of Tamas. So what happened in Yud Beis Tamas? That was the, that's the day of the birthday of the previous Rebbe. Of, 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 a, a day, uh, of, of the, the Rebbe that was liberated. So what happened on the 12th? So A, it was his birthday. But also they notified him that he's going to be released. But when, was the re- when did the release happen? It happened on the 13th day of Tamas. Why is that? He was notified on the 12th. He got released on the 13th. Never explained beautifully. He says like this. This that on the 12th of Tamas, they notified him he's going to be released because that is like 12 is they were, is the finite. And one got came into, into the 12, but he wasn't released yet because 12 is finite. Um, because 12 remained where it was, even though he was notified. It means on the 12th, the one came in 12, he was notified he's being released. Voila, it felt the godly light. But guess what? 12 is still finite. <coughs> and therefore, he was not redeemed in reality, even though the one came in the 12. There's a beautiful way to explain this. Why? Because what is what is what is gula? What is redemption? Redemption is without limits. You you were a prisoner. How do you get redeemed? And especially the way it's the, the way it's explained in the famous letter of the previous Rebbe. That came it actually introduction to the Hasidic discourse of ten people that are sitting and learning Torah, and he says like this: that not only that Hashem redeemed me, but Hashem redeemed everybody, every Jewish person, even someone that just called a, that's called a Jewish person. And not only did he redeem them, them, but the Rebbe says to add that he actually redeemed all future generations. Us today, we're redeemed. Because the redemption of the twelfth and, and the thirteenth of Tammuz has a, a residual effect. And it, it and it continues um, for redemption for all the Jewish people all throughout the his, all through through history in the future history future generations and a redemption in reference to learning Torah and doing mitzvot and also redemption in terms of physical things to have children a life um, uh, uh, sustenance and should be all in a way of abundance without any limits not only that. That the redemption of the twelfth and the thirteenth Tammuz, even the preparation for the redemption, <clears throat> for the ultimate redemption, which is going to come through Mashiach, through King Mashiach, and then we're going to have the true redemption without any limits. But the fact is, when was the actual redemption? Was on the thirteenth. Because the 13th is when that's the numerical value of 1, that the actual 12 gets elevated into the 1, into a, to, to, to off the chart. So here you have a, the practical application of this idea of, of, of um, uh, 12 into 1 versus 1 into 12. Um, in the 12th of Talmud, yes, 1 shined in 12, 12 remained 12. And that's why he felt the redemption. He was notified, but it didn't happen the redemption. What happened on the 13th is the 12th gets, it, 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 it goes into the 1, it becomes Echad, and that's when he had the ultimate redemption. And he continues on the Hasidic Discord to explain that even though that Torah is drawing down godliness into this world, but nevertheless, you still have to put effort and toil into Torah. In other words, you learn Torah, it's a gift from Hashem. You're learning Hashem's Torah, you're bringing godliness to the world. But you still have to put the effort in. And he says, when it comes to putting the effort, there's two, two different types of effort. In other words, in order for Torah to be appropriate, like, in, you know, appropriate learning Torah, you have to have, before, as an introduction, before you sit down to learn Torah, you have to pray. Because, like we said, it says clearly, if someone says, I only have Torah, I only learn Torah, I don't pray. Guess what? You don't even have Torah. It's a prerequisite. Before you learn Torah, you have to pray. That's point number one. And also, that when you learn Torah, you have to put effort into it. 
And in the effort, there's two components. So two things you're saying. Number one is before you learn to you have to put the effort. And then in turn, you have to have effort. And in the effort, there's two ideas. One is to literally understand, to put the effort to understanding Torah. Like it says, you got to, you have to put the yagi, you have to put effort, umatsasa. That's point number one in the effort. You have to meditate, comprehend the Torah. And B, that the effort on Torah has to be in a way that it changes you, changes your nature, has to change your habits. And like, for example, it says that it doesn't, uh, you have to do it in a way that it changes you. Like we know it says in the Talmud, you can't compare. In those days, they would, it was the custom was everything they learned, they learned a hundred times. 101 they've done. They're not doing 101. So if somebody did 101, that's called breaking your nature. That's called breaking your effort. So he says when it comes to learning Torah, A, you need to have the, the, the prayer refer, first. B, you have to put the effort. And the effort means you have to comprehend it. And you'll have to, you have to go ahead and, and do something against your actual nature. Everyone says one second. <clears throat> the fact is, we're saying that the term that we use, is Tati, put the effort in, in Torah, it's mainly where by putting in the effort while you're learning Torah itself. Learning it, use your head. And you have to you have to go against your grain. But the fact that in the Hasidic discourse, what does he say? In order for Torah to be proper, to be proper learning Torah, you have to have prayer first. And then he says, oh, then you also have to have effort in Torah. Why prayer first? And the other points out actually, if you give a look in Tanya, where he speaks about these two ideas: the putting in the effort in learning Torah and the effort in serving Hashem. And we know serving Hashem is, 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 is through prayer. And the way the author explains it in Tanya, he first brings the verse that says you have to you look to see between someone that serves Hashem and doesn't serve Hashem. And in, in reference to the serving Hashem and not serving Hashem, so it says in, in, in the Talmud that what someone that learned, uh, 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 doesn't serve Hashem, he learns it once, a uh, hundred times. And serving Hashem, he does it a hundred and one times. But you're changing your nature and learning Torah. And that's the source that all the mitzvahs, and especially prayer, has to be against, against your grain. But the fact is, so what does he say first? It's all about learning Torah first. But the fact that in the Hasidic discourse, um, he's changed it the way it says in Tanya. So obviously, he, he, the, the, the previous term is being very specific and saying, no, no, no. Guess what? Before you learn, you got to pray. And the question is, why is that? So he says, well, understand it based on an introduction, and if you, you point out a very, very interesting point that the Rebbe says in the Maimon, he says like this. He says that even though Torah is come habshacha melmai lamata, generally speaking, like we said, Torah is something you put the effort in, pray you put the effort in. Torah comes from Hashem. <laughs> it's just a matter of, you, it, Hashem gave us the Torah, the Torah exists before we even learn it. And it was, what, what does that mean? What, what, the, so literally the, the, the explanation is, because since Torah comes from Hashem, so what's the, what's what, what's the point of learning with ten people, or more people? If it's coming from Hashem, to sit down and learn, you don't need multiple people. Why, why is that? Because since when you're dealing with prayer, how do you get, how does prayer happen? No, you have to put the effort in prayer. So therefore, the more people that are praying, it's much greater effort. However, when it comes to Torah, which comes from Hashem, what's the difference if it's, if it's, if it's one or many? And like based on we know that the reason that through, through prayer, you literally can bring in a, a, new, a new will of Hashem, because that's because the tremendous power, I'll use the Kabbalistic term and I'll explain it, of Halas Man, which is the female, Mayim Nuk from the female waters, or like the expression is Lamasa Yedecha Tiksoiv, based on the effort you put in, that's, that's what Hashem, Hashem wants our effort. So you can say, so this that he points out, and he says that Torah comes from high, it works the opposite also. Because since Torah comes from Hashem, so therefore, even through learning Torah with multiple people, <coughs> you cannot have a, a, a greater drawing and light, just like the, 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 like like the, like 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 prayer, because prayer, bottom line, comes from the effort. This comes from Hashem. So, based on this, he explains the, the order why he says why why he says why he says the order in the Hasidic discourse differently, and he says like this: first, he explains the the work and the effort of prayer because and that you need prayer in order to have learning Torah that comes first then he explains the effort in learning Torah why is that because the main effort is in prayer and that's why it's called that's why when we say avodah spiritual work we're talking about prayer because prayer prayer is work because what is real work changing your nature, changing the way you do things, and if you want to change yourself, you want to transform yourself, that happens through prayer. Prayer is the time to transform yourself. It's effort. And especially when you're praying and you're doing the Shemona Esrei, because when you're doing the Shemona Esrei, you're standing just like totally 
humble, just like a servant in front of his master, total humility. So prayer is the part of transformation. That's why it comes first. And that's why he, can, he introduces in the Chassidic Discourse the, 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 the work and the effort of prayer that we need to learn Torah. Why? Because the, uh, the work and the, the transformation of learning Torah on its own cannot bring in this powerful, power, the powerful gift, the powerful gift, because, because the, 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 it's really coming from, from Hashem. But what, this, that a person learns Torah and learns Torah in public, <coughs> it causes to draw down a gift much more than you put in, just like by prayer that brings in much giver, but much greater a, a gift. That comes mainly through the fact that you do the avoid of prayer before before learning Torah. <coughs> Why? Because that's ultimately where the, where the work is. The work is in prayer. But the service says this explanation is really not enough. Why? Because the fact is, when you learn Torah, that what, what, what you draw down comes through based on what you put in. And where does that happen? It comes through learning Torah. And the success in learning Torah is much, much greater. So therefore, you need to have not only the learning of the Torah, but the effort, you have to put in the effort of literally transforming yourself. It means that it's doing more than you would normally do. And then um, your learning is becomes a vessel for drawing down the avoid of prayer, which we do for, uh, for learning Torah. So what is saying is like this. What we need first is to pray. By praying, we're working on ourselves, and then we become a vessel for the greatest blessings, and we draw down the greatest blessings. Then we have the learning Torah, and especially Rab, and that brought, draws it down. And then when you have the learning Torah more than your, your effort, then you become a vessel for actually the biggest gift that comes from that, that comes by learning Torah after you prayed. And I would like to add with an explanation of the connection of someone learns 101 times, which we said 101, that's changing your nature and more than you would normally do when you learn Torah, and connect that to the 13 attributes of compassion. In other words, when a person learns 101 times, then what happens is, not only is the 101 against your nature, you're actually elevating all the 100 times before that. Just like, like I explained before with the, with, the, with the number 13, that when you add that number, the, the, the number 1, because 12 is 12 is nature. And when you add the number 1, you elevate, and there's a change in the 12 itself. So based on the service says, he'd like to explain the teaching of the Magad of Mitzvah, which has brought down this to the discourse, that when Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, Kale, which we said is the first um, uh, na- the name of, of the 13 attributes of compassion Hashem. So what did Hashem answer him back? Kal v'choymer, which is the first of, of, the, uh, of, of the ways we learn things out. Kal v'choymer, Xerah Shava. In other words, so what does it say? Moshe Rabbeinu in his prayer said, Kale, God, no, Rifan Allah. In other words, w- w- what is he bringing out? That the, 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 he's pointing out in his prayer um, that the main drawing down of the 13 attributes of compassion on high, uh, where, 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 where is it says? It's referring to prayer. And then you have Torah. So it's Kel Nor Rafala, where is that? That's a, that's a prayer, he said to Hashem. And that's the reason that when you draw down, that comes down much more than you put in through Torah, we learn from, where do we learn from? We learn from the idea of a prayer because the main and source is in prayer. Kel Nob, he's praying to Hashem. And through that, you actually bring it down into Torah. And obviously, he'd like to add that this idea that when a person prays and then it comes down into Torah is also found in the uh, the the uh, chapters of Psalms, which is connected to the the, the birthday of the, the previous Rabbi of that year when the Rabbi said the Chassidic discourse, and uh, the, the the it, it, both in the in the uh, uh, Psalm 102, which is connected to the the completion of the hundred as uh, hundred and second birthday. So how does it begin? It says Tefillah Ani, a prayer for the poor person, starts of a prayer, and then he goes on to cut. That's going to be written down for future generations. Which what's future generations? Torah. Torah we know is everlasting. So you see, it starts with prayer, and then it goes on to Torah. The same thing also in Cha- in, in, in Psalm 103, which is connected to the hundred and third year of the, of, the, of the previous year beginning new birthday so it starts a barchi nasi hashem the appraising hashem which basically is idea of a prayer and afterwards he goes on to say 
Baruch Hu Hashem, praise Hashem, bless Hashem. Giboy Rekoyach, Oisa Dvari, do the words of Hashem, Lishmoya, to listen. So it says, first it says Oisa to do, and then it says to, to listen, which basically is the whole idea of Nasav and Nishma Bad when we receive the Torah. So you see from both these verses how prayer comes first, and then afterwards you have the idea of Limina Torah. And Rebbe goes on to say like as follows We know the teaching of the Baal that anything that a person sees, or hears is a lesson. You see it, there's a lesson serving Hashem. You hear it, it's a lesson serving Hashem. That's in the Baal Shem Tov. The Magad of Masrich adds that not everything a person sees, everything a person hears, and it goes a step further. Anything that happens, Mikrashi, anything that happens to a person, anything that happens besides seeing and hearing, anything that anything happens is to serve Hashem. What does that mean? That anything that happens is everything is the Ashkaka Pratis, everything is divine providence. And so why is it called a happening? Because in, in this world we call it a happening, because we don't see. But the fact is everything is Hashem. Like the example he gives where it says that in, in the Torah, Ki Kari Kansip of Necha, you happen to find um, a, 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 a nest of, of birds. And so, so, so it says, Rashi says that you happen to find it. Not if it's, let's say you have a nest in your house. It means it's, it's been so much available. Why? Even though everything is divine providence. And not only that, <coughs> that you can say that, 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 it, that it's dear. And Hashem, the highest level, the Bachshav Akdum and Ak put it there. But nevertheless, the level, what does the verse say? Ki kari It's a turn that it happened. In other words, there are certain things that. That the the, the the that the reason why it happened is yes, it was prepared there from Hashem Adunak, but there are certain things that it happened only because it just happened. So how much more? So we see from here that how much more so in the Torah, if something in the Torah is in a specific way where basically the prayer comes before the Torah, obviously not just it happened. No, no, because no, the prayer is supposed to be before the Torah. Now, so even though it looked like oh yeah, it just happened to be that way. No, the, everything you have a lesson. There, uh, everything you have a lesson. So basically he says that you can say that this, that the 13 attributes of the Torah that come, that when you learn Torah, the Kabbalah Karmic Zerah Shabbat comes from where? From the 13 attributes of compassion in prayer, um, and, and what's the first one? It's, it's the Kabbalah Chaimer, to teach us that even though that the main drawing down comes from where? From the 13 attributes of compassion, which is through prayer. And through that it comes in the Torah, but nevertheless there's still a quality in the way it comes in Torah versus the way it comes in prayer. Like, just like, for example, Kal V'chaymer, something which is light and heavy, that even though that um, the heavy thing you're learning from the weaker thing, but the fa- it could still be heavier than the lighter thing. And like he explains in the Hasidic Discourse, that this that we learn, <coughs> that it comes down, the, 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 the gift that comes, with, which is much greater than you put in, and where do we know that from? We, 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 the, through the learning in public, which, and we learn that from the prayer in public. And it's obviously we learn it in the way of Koshkem Echamachomer. That means in each one, each one accom- it, it, it com- accomplishes the same thing. Now, the difference between learning Torah and praying is just like the difference between a blessing and prayer. Until now we learned the difference between that prayer is the introduction the effort, then the Torah, and then the Torah with effort, and that brings down the greatest blessings above the charts. So till now we learned the difference between pray, prayer and Torah. Now he says the, the same difference applies to a ble- uh, the same difference applies with the idea of a blessing and prayer. Why is that? Because when a person goes ahead and prays, so the person what is down here and he's he, he beseeching Hashem, Hashem, give me blessings. Blessing, on the other hand. The person has the power to bless, which is the priest, that they have the power to bless. That they're standing on top in the source, the way it comes to the blessing, and they're shooting down the blessing down here. And like the, like it says in the blessing, your brach Hashem, Hashem should, should bless you, which is a command. So the same thing also when it applies to the, the, the flow of energy through Torah. Because since we know Torah belongs to everybody, it totally any it's ownerless. It belongs to everybody. It means every single person could merit to, to learning Torah, and up to the point it becomes your Torah when you learn Torah, and you can become you become the owner of Torah, and how much more so you can become the owner on the flow. So just like prayer, you have to put the effort in, and blessing, you have the power to bring it down. The same thing also through Torah, you have the power to bring down the energy into this world. That's that's one quality. Another quality in the in the priestly blessing is that the flow that comes down through a pleasing blessing blessing comes from above hishtalshus, above any levels. 
Because a blessing in general is to bring down something that's in, um, in the source, not something new. A blessing doesn't bring anything new. And, that, and, and that's the quality of prayer over blessing. Because through prayer, you can bring down something new. So that's a regular blessing and prayer. A, a blessing, you, you're bringing down something uh, that exists, and, and prayer, you're bringing something new. But when it comes to the priestly blessing, there's two qualities. That one is that it comes from above Ishtal Shalos, above leather you can bring down, something is totally new, and it's, a, and it's also can be done in a way of a commandment. And the same thing also, just like in, in, in the priestly blessing you have both, the same thing applies to Torah. You have also both qualities. That through learning Torah you can bring from above Ishtal Shalos, and it could be a command. And, and that's the real gift and the power of learning Torah in public versus prayer in public because when you learn Torah, it's in a way that you have the power. So what he's bringing out is something very, very powerful like this. On one hand, you need prayer first. Prayer puts the effort in and it brings from above a Then learning Torah brings from above a and you have to put the effort in. But what he's saying is like this. By prayer, even though it's first, even though it's first, Guess what? You can only bring you can only you, you can only bring from a certain level, and you can't guarantee it's going to happen. You have to pray. Either Hashem says yes, or Hashem no. Torah, on the other hand, we said is not only like a blessing; it's like the priestly blessings that comes from the highest level, and we have the power to force it through 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 the learning Torah. Now, even though the priestly blessings is its own mitzvah to bless the Jewish people, but guess what? It's part of the prayer service. So here we see that even though tefillah, so to speak, is a lower level, because we have to beseech, and it's not a guarantee you, a guarantee you're going to reach it, but nevertheless, through prayer, which technically is on a lower level, we reach the blessing of the priestly blessings um, that bring it down from the highest level down here. So based on service, you can say, when you learn from a kalva choymer, just like when it comes to prayer and the priestly blessings, even though it's totally different, because a prayer you're asking and a priestly blessing that's coming down from high, and you're commanding, but nevertheless, how do you reach the priestly blessing? You can't just go into the priestly blessing, you do it during, during the prayer service. The same thing also applies with, with, with Torah and, and prayer. The, even though that bringing down from the 13th anniversary of compassion, above a which comes through Torah, so it's, it's, it's uh, higher than bringing down um, from the 13th anniversary through prayer, like we said before, because prayer is much deeper, but nevertheless, um, through learning Torah, you bring it down <coughs> um, through prayer, and which is even higher than the 13 attributes of compassion of Torah. So each one basically has the quality over the other one. And I would like to add that even learning this in a way of a Kalva Chaymer, we're saying that we're learning out from the, from the stronger one to the weaker one, etc. That means w- the prayer is coming from down here on high, we're beseeching Hashem, and the priestly blessing is coming down from high and down below. But nevertheless, how do you reach the, the priestly blessings? You need to have prayer. So the same thing also in reference to learning Torah and, 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 and praying. That even though that the, the drawing down Torah, um, which comes through the 13 attributes of compassion, above Ashtalshlus, which is Lord in prayer, but nevertheless, <coughs> um, this that it comes down, um, through Torah into this world, um, it's, it's, we learn it out from the, from the laws of a Kalva You can say that through that, a person goes ahead, uh, learns Torah, and it becomes your Torah that you're learning, and you become, so to speak, the owner of the Torah you're learning. So you literally become the owner on the flow of prayer that comes through Torah. And that's why learning Torah and prayer is learned from a Kalva Choymer. Why? Because drawing down uh, 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 prayer, which comes through Torah, has a quality um, uh, over um, prayer itself. So you see, each one, obviously, they feed on each other, and, and we use the tool of Kalva Choymer to, to make one stronger over the other one. I would like to add that through the, so the, through the, 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 the teaching of the 10 people that are sitting and learning Torah, um, and the teaching of, of the previous Shabbat that was, it was given to, to learn um, in honor of his uh, celebra- uh, celebration of, liber- of, of liberation. So what he did was he made every one of us an emissary of the free Yerker Rebbe, the one that's the, the owner of the, 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 the liberation, to, to study this. And he gave us the power to be successful, a successful in establishing community shiurim, community classes. And success in everything that talks about in the Hasidic discourse, that and success that and to bring down all the powerful blessing that comes through learning Torah in public, and this should all be done. There, there was says in a way of the priestly blessings, 
that the brushing should come down very, very quick. And like Adam explains, look at the Torah, the Hine Parachmat, the Aaron, the Igmo Shkedim, that Aaron's staff sprouted and, and the almonds came out, that through the Shkedim, the good, the, <coughs> the good almonds of the iron staff, what happens is not only do we have good almonds, we actually transform the bitter, uh, the bitter al uh, almonds, which basically is referring to the three weeks, which are, are weeks of three weeks of mourning. We should transform them to days of joy and celebration, and the ultimate joy and celebration is going to happen with the true redemption, the complete redemption, which is going to happen through Mashiach Tzedkenu, and should happen in Heira via Menu Mamish. So here you have another powerful, beautiful Hasidic discourse from the Rebbe, the power of prayer, the power of Torah study, the power of community, and by, 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 pray, by, by praying and, Torah, and, and learning Torah, we will bring down the greatest blessings, like the Rebbe says, the ultimate, the great, the great blessing of Mashiach coming, and God willing, our next class will be in Rishalayim, Ir HaKodesh. Have a great and blessed week. Shavua Tov.